Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is wonderful to be with you here, worshiping in this lovely space. We're going to begin our service by the lighting of the Advent wreath, which is found in your leaflet. 
and I'm going to invite Liz and Alice and Bertha to help with that. So we're on week three, the week of joy, and we have our first two candles lit today. When I look around, I see shadows of sadness, families who have lost loved ones, people in prison, people who are isolated and feel on their own. When I look around, I see shadows of grief, people dreading the holidays because of painful memories or because they don't want to spend another Christmas alone. In the face of sadness, we light a candle of joy. In the face of grief, in the face of loss, we light a candle of joy. May the light from this candle overwhelm the world. May the light from this candle say to all that God's joy is coming on earth as it already is in heaven. Friends, be not afraid. God's joy is at hand. Our service this morning comes from your green book, the Book of Alternative Services, and begins on page 185. Welcome to those that are joining us virtually. It is great to have you in worship with us. And thank you to those who help with the lighting of the Advent wreath. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of power and mystery, you call us once again to celebrate the coming of your Son. Remove those things which hinder love of you, that when he comes, we, he may find us waiting in awe and wonder for him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 to 4 and 8 to 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for all those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. 
All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its roots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm today is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Sion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those who call you those who call you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us, but do not say about yourself. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they have been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you're neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of Christ. <laughs> Thank you. 
These are the coughs that never end. (laughs) Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and courage. Amen. You may be seated. This is like week four post having a cold, so it lingers. This Sunday is the third Sunday in Advent, and we light the pink candle, the candle of joy. And I realized I forgot to get my pink clip-ons to match, but I'm still in blue for Advent. It's good. My glasses match all the liturgical seasons. It's fun. That's not part of the sermon. We light the candle of joy, and we recall the reading from Thessalonians, which says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, hold fast to what is good. As the hymn goes, rejoice, I say rejoice. Rejoice means to show great joy or delight. This week, I shared a poem online that was read by Harry Baker. It is called Joy, and it was originally written by Donna Ashworth, and it spoke to my heart and the joy and light that comes from knowing Christ in my life. And so I wanted to share it with you. It goes like this. Joy does not arrive with a fanfare, on a red carpet strewn, strewn with the flowers of a perfect life. Joy sneaks in as you pour a cup of coffee, watching the sun hit your favorite tree just right. And you wash your joy away because you're not ready for it. Your house is not as it must be for such a distinguished guest. But joy cares nothing for your messy home or your bank balance or your waistline you see. Joy is supposed to slither through the cracks of your imperfect life. That's how joy works. You cannot invite her. You can only be ready when she appears and hug her with meaning because in this very moment, joy chose you. We have Old Testament prophets who foretold of the Messiah coming and a voice in the wilderness preparing the way. Today we hear from the Gospel of John about John the Baptist and no, they're not the same person. John the Baptist, who we hear about, was pointing to Jesus. He was preparing people for the Messiah. And it got me thinking about how we see God in our midst. There's times when we can be like John and we can point and say, oh yeah, Jesus was at work there and here and here and here and here. Um, And we can see Jesus working around us through the Holy Spirit. And there's times where we can also be like Jesus trying to follow the way Jesus lived, and that is the Spirit working within us. Wherever we find Jesus, even when we least expect it, joy resides. Have you ever noticed that? There has never been a time when I have felt connected with God that I have not felt joy and peace, even in my saddest and toughest moments. Like the poet outlined above, I find God when I least expect God, in the simple moments and in the huge ones. The light of the world brings these bursts of joy. Bursting in through the cracks, Leonard Cohen's song has been on my mind so much this past week. The one called Anthem that has the lyric, there's a crack, a crack in everything, and that's how the light gets in. We talk a fair amount in church life, especially if we're listening to Paul, about suffering for God. But sometimes we forget to focus on the joy of seeing, knowing, loving, and being loved by the Holy One. Jesus arriving when we least expect it. We do not have to be perfect or have everything perfect. Just have to be willing to say yes, to be open, and to rejoice. When I think about joy, well, the first thing I think about is my awesome cousin, because that's her name. But after that, I think of Reverend Brenda. Brenda, who will soon return from her trip. Um, And she taught me to respond in a different way when people say thank you. Do you know what, do you know how Brenda responds if, if you say thank you, Brenda? Does anyone remember what she says? No? 
remember, but I remember the feeling of joy when she She says, it's my joy. Every time, without fail. Not, you're welcome. Not, oh, it was no, no big deal, no big deal. That's normally what I would say. But she says, it was my joy. So since that time, I've changed that saying. So when someone says thank you, I say, it is my joy to be able to be a part of this, to do this, whatever it might be. It can be easy to get bogged down by the weight of the things that are happening in our lives and in the world. And I have found that being open to God's joy, bursting in the little moments, is helping me change the way I see the world and God in it. Leah, um, many of you will know, but not all of you. Leah, I'm married. I've got a lovely spouse. His name's Dylan. We have two dogs. And we have a roommate who's here for a year named Leah Marshall, and she's working for the diocese. Anyway, it's been great. She's been here since last January. And she left for Christmas break early Saturday morning and asked me to drive her. And I could not get asleep until late Friday evening. So I got three or four hours of broken sleep before waking up at 4.30 a.m. to drive her to the airport. Did I want to do this? No. No. <laughs> I detest early mornings. I am living my best life when I can sleep in till 10 or 11. Somehow I didn't get past those teen years. I still operate. Can stay up till 1 or 2, would love to sleep in till 11. But I got up, I was sleepy, I made coffee, and it was pretty weak and it didn't taste great. And the car was frosted over, so I went out to scrape it off. And then I couldn't find my scraper, so I searched for that, and then to warm it up. And then I realized, oh no, my car is not that clean. So then I cleaned it out. And I thought, ugh. So I got in, I drove her to the airport, dropped her off, and returned home. And it was still dark out when I returned home, and it just felt like this is not right. No, I need sun. I was happy she was off to see her family, but I was also sad because she is a wonderful person to live with and to spend time with. And I'm going to miss her over the holiday season. Just like the example of changing how I respond to thank you, joy kept crept in when I arrived home at 5.30 a.m. and caused me to reframe how I was viewing things. Reframing is, is a way of looking at things differently. When I parked, I, so I, I live right next to the to the church. And when I parked, I look out and I see the church and I see the hall and I see the arm in the middle. And it's a really beautiful view. When I looked, the grass was there and it was all frosted over and it was glistening. And it was like something out of a movie. It was majestic and beautiful and peaceful and still and quiet and magical. I was in awe of God's creation. And I stopped, and I took a moment, and just took it in, and gave thanks. And then, of course, I took a picture of it, because that's what I do. Hauled out my phone. And then I went back in and went to bed. But I was thinking about it, reframing the whole morning. What would, I look like? what would it look like? When I take a moment, I can look at that whole time pretty differently. Like, how amazing is it to have such a wonderful friend? I didn't even know her prior to her coming to live with us. We had one Zoom call, and then she came to live with us. And from that, I've got one of the closest friends in the world. Um, so how amazing is it to have such a wonderful friend? How amazing is it to have a body that allows me to move, to drive, to see, to have a car, to drive a friend, and to have coffee to drink? to have the luxury of heated seats and Android Auto, to live in a beautiful, warm home, to have a family to come home to, to have such a short commute to work. Like people have to commute hours. I can throw a snowball and hit the church. To live in this lovely part of the city, and the list can keep going on. What if we work to reframe, reframe a little more this season? What if we looked at things through the eyes of rejoicing, of finding joy, of resting in God's presence? What if we made 
a little effort to slow down, to pay attention to where God is in us, in our lives, in creation. But don't get me wrong, having moments of frustration and grief and sadness is a normal part of being human. And it's important to feel that. But we also have the opportunity to reframe them in the light of God's love and joy. In some of the darkest, hardest moments, that light and love crack through. So how might we welcome ooh, how might we welcome and hug the joy of Jesus? when he comes. Amen. We continue on page 189 with the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was I died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may sit, stand, or kneel as we pray. Excuse me. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. A wisdom from the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things to the end of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Lord, and head of the house of Israel, you had appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush, and you gave the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arm and ransom us. Lord Jesus, come soon. O branch of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations, all kings and leaders will keep silence before you, and all peoples will summon you to their aid. Come, set us free, and delay no more. Lord Jesus, come soon. O key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and none can shut. You shut and none can open. Come and free the captors from prison. Lord Jesus, come soon. O morning star, splendor of the light eternal and bright sun of righteousness, come and enlighten all who dwell in the darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord Jesus, come soon. We take a moment to offer our cares and concerns to you, O Lord. We ask for your help and guidance, God. We ask for your healing of this world and those we love, especially remembering our earth at the conclusion of COP28 in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. The holy land, the land of the Holy One, and the many conflicts that 
rile that region and our earth. We also pray especially for those whom prayers have been requested this day. For Norman, Shirley, Eleanor, Jacob, John, Anne-Marie, Charles, Pat, Teresa, Luke, Khadija, Rick, Nora, Carolyn, Peggy, Bill. And we also remember the late Earl Wagner. May he rest in peace and may light perpetual shine upon him. Lord Jesus, come soon. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfill their desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. Come and save the creature and the creation on earth here you fashioned from clay. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their Savior, come and save us, Lord our God. Lord Jesus, come soon. We continue on page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites us to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share the peace with one another in a way that you are comfortable. And our offertory hymn is number 91.
Let us pray. God of hope, oh, I'll wait, sorry. We have to grab the offering. Thank you, thank you. Just a reminder, we have the offering of bread and wine. We have the offering of financial gifts many have given. But we also offer ourselves and all that we have to God when we pray together. God of hope, renew us in the joy of your salvation and make us a living sacrifice to you for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We use Eucharistic prayer number two, found on page 196. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church, gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant Jesus Christ, all glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On page 212, we use breaking of the bread number five. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Just a reminder that we have two communion stations. You're welcome to come receive the bread and the wine. We administer the wine using a dropper. Um, and you're also welcome to come for a blessing. Uh, just, just come on up. I have, I'm the person that has the gluten-free wafers for today.
Let us pray. Merciful God, may this Eucharist free us from our sins, fill us with unending joy, and prepare us for the birthday of our Savior. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord now and forever. And on page 214, I invite you to stand in body or spirit. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ, who walks with wounded feet, walk with you on your journey. May the Lord Jesus Christ, who serves with wounded hands, help you to serve one another. And may the Lord Jesus Christ, who loves with a wounded heart, be your love. And may you see the face of Jesus in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Jesus in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. I'm going to invite Marianne to come up and share a missional moment from Mother's Union. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Marianne White, and I'd like to share a missional moment about some of the activities recently with Mother's Union, a group within the church. Mother's Union, as you have heard before, is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. And personally, I'm in favor of celebrating big events. And we're especially lucky because we have four founding members who are still with us as active members of Mother's Union. B. Mason, Irene Spargo, Doreen Wong, and Diane Cutler. Now, I mentioned to you before about making jam, and you folks have done your duty. <laughs> We've been making jam together since the year 2000. Uh, that's 23 years with one year off for the pandemic. And uh, we've been selling the jam within the parish as our major fundraiser. And this year, our profit, I'm pleased to say, was $499, which is amazing. At our December meeting, which was held last Sunday, we traditionally decide how to disperse our uh, funds, our profits for the year from Mother's Union by making donations to help uh, communities near and afar. And this year, we, we uh, dispersed uh, sorry, $600 in total. And I thought I would just tell you where that money, mostly from your jam purchases, has gone. We have donated $200 to the Northern Clergy Family Fund. This was started by the Canadian Mothers Union in 1974 and is sent to the families in the North who are clergy families. And believe me, those families could use some cash. We also sent $200 to PWRDF, the Primates World Relief and Development Fund. And this is a church agency for the sustainable development and um, uh, humanitarian relief all around the world. And you can imagine that money will be very welcome. It's not very much considering all the things that they do. We also contributed $100 towards what's called Make a Mother's Day. This is a project of the Worldwide Mothers Union, and it's to raise funds for the global community and projects that transform lives, including starting small businesses. So those, some of those are, are national, some of those are international, and the next one was most local. We uh, contributed $100 towards the tickle trunk for the purchase of things that, that uh, people will help themselves to. And we think that's also money very well spent. So I'll just close our 40th anniversary year. I've spoken a few times about some of our activities by saying that new members of the Mother's Union are always welcome. You don't have to be a mother. You don't have to be a woman. Men and women are welcome. Our purpose is to support family life in doing our fundraising and having fun. And we also support one another. And we always meet well, generally meet on the second Sunday after church service, second Sunday of the month at 11.30. There's usually a notice in the bulletin or announcement made. So feel free to just come over to the Townsend Room and join with us and see what we're about if you'd like to join us. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Very much appreciate it. And uh, yeah, so anyone's welcome, regardless of gender to join Mother's Union, take part, and have some fun. It is, uh, they do a lot of really wonderful work, and our group here has uh, got a long history. 40 years is pretty amazing. Can we give a little round of applause for 40 years of work at Mother's Union here? I had jam for breakfast. It was good. 
Um, I won't keep you long. I want to remind you, next Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and it is also Christmas Eve. So there's a service at 10 o'clock. There's a service, and that'll be the fourth Sunday of Advent. And then at 4 and 7, we will celebrate Christmas um, together in the evening. And then there's another service for any diehard BC peers or people who would like a quiet morning service. It's going to be in our chapel just over here. Um, so you're welcome to come at 10 o'clock on Christmas Day on the 25th. Please take a look at the things that are happening. It's in your leaflet. There's newsletters at the back of the church printed. If you want to take one, if you don't get it by email, please do so. Uh, please take your leaflet home with you. Please check out our website for other updates as well. At the back of the church, Alan said it didn't get in the leaflet, but Christmas letters are here. So um, we thought we'd give a chance for people to grab their Christmas letter before they get sent out in the mail. So please um, pick one up at the back of the church. If your name isn't on one for one reason or another, whether it be you're visiting, you're a relatively new member, or because somehow a label got missed, because life happens, there are extra letters there. So feel free to pick a blank one up if your name is not found for one reason or another. Um, Tomorrow we are supposed to have our, it's not in the leaflet, our weather date for Christmas caroling because last Monday was bad weather. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure tomorrow is going to be any better, so please keep a look. We'll post it online if it's happening or not. Um, and I don't know if we'll try to fit in another date or not. That'll be up to our missional engagement leadership team. But we have little bags to give out, and we were going to carol at the bus station, followed by some Tims. So we shall see. We will talk about it. Please keep posted. There's also a drumming circle tomorrow if you want to come and practice. Chris, did you have something you want to say? But it's supposed to be at 5, I do believe. Right, Alice? Yeah. Five o'clock, but if it's like raining and blowing really bad, maybe not. So take a look, please. Uh, I encourage you to take part in anything you feel called to take part in. Wednesdays is taking a break for a while. Calendars are ready for pickup. Alice is waving them back here. Um, please, if you've ordered a calendar, get it from Alice at the back at the table with the calendars. There are also envelopes at the back of the church if you need to pick any up. And one of my favorite things about Sunday is that we get to eat and drink coffee together. So you're welcome to stay for coffee hour this day. The final thing before we sing our recessional hymn is are there any joys and sorrows to share that we would pray for this day together? Alice and Bertha are hosting coffee hour. Thank you. <laughs> lots and lots of goodies. Welcome. What are your names? Catherine and Todd. And Todd is, you said, your son, Beth? Yeah, my son. Wonderful. That's so exciting. Lovely to meet you. Oh, wonderful. Great Christmas party last night. <laughs> Welcome. Good to have you here. Yes, Jordan. Um, family member of mine, uh, my uncle here in Halifax, uh, discharged from hospital on Tuesday. I'm going to be the one helping my aunt and him get settled in back at their house. It's, it's kind of a it's, it's definitely a joy. It's been a rock too. And I also am going to be starting a new company. Oh, wow. So for those that didn't hear that, Jordan's uncle, you may have been praying for him, I know I have, um, is coming home from the hospital finally. So that's wonderful news, and you'll be assisting with that. And I hear that you have a new job. That will start with another company in January. So congratulations. Woohoo. That's exciting news. All right, I read. Oh. Woohoo! 
Irene's grandson is in dentistry school, just been admitted. That's wonderful. What's his name, Irene? Liam. Liam. All right, so we're going to pray for Jordan's uncle. We're going to pray for Jordan starting a new job. We are going to pray for Liam. Anything else you want me to add in there? Yes, Esther. Pray for what? Oh, that starts tomorrow. It's to Mexico, right? Yeah. So Esther and her family are going to Mexico tomorrow for Christmas. We will miss you, but have a fabulous time. <laughs> Love it. Yes. We added her on the prayer list, but I don't think people would know the context. So um, Diane's sister was admitted to hospital yesterday um, and getting care there. That's Peggy. So we're going to pray for her too. I'm just making sure I don't forget any of that. That's beautiful. I'm going to play for Liam Dentistry. Esther. Um, anything else? Oh yeah, Jordan. No, I mean, I mean, anything else you want to add? <laughs> oh, God, I thank you for this wonderful day. For everyone who has participated in this worship, for the music we've shared and sang, uh, for the prayers that have been said and given, for all those that have made this worship possible. And for you, for all that you give us, God. We give thanks for the good news of Jordan's uncle returning home. We pray for that transition would be a good one and that you would continue to improve his health, Lord. God, I pray also for Peggy, who is dealing with health issues. God, I pray that the staff at the hospital would look after her and bring healing to her body would help her to have days of joy, be surrounded by love. God, I just pray that you would be with her in this time and help to comfort her and keep her safe. God, I give thanks for the things that bring us joy, for Liam uh, getting into dentistry school. We pray that you would um, bless that schooling time and help him to grow into that career and life, and that you would surround him with your love and support. We pray for Jordan taking a new job as well in the new year. God, I pray that that job would be life-giving and fill him with purpose and joy each day, and that you would be with him through it all. We pray for Esther and her family who are off to Mexico tomorrow. God, I pray for safe journeys, for time filled with laughter and joy and love. I pray that they would have a great time together and that their health would stay well. God, we know so many colds and flus and COVID is being spread around. And just pray for, for them and for everyone in our congregation, in our city, that this Christmas would be without too much illness. And that you would guide us along the way, and the moments of joy would always burst through. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 362.
Our liturgy is ended, but our service and our coffee hour is just beginning. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And if I don't see you, have a very, very Merry Christmas.